So everybody, this is a guided walkthrough for the Pi Time Challenge. It is an easy challenge in the binary hacking category in the Pico CTF 2025 event. The description says, can you try to get the flag? Beware, we have Pi. So what are they talking about when they talk about Pi? Additional details will be available after launching your challenge instance. So what we need to do is we need to start our challenge instance before we're able to get access to, but uh, but yeah, after you um, after you get access to the challenge, you need to click on this button right here. So this blue launch instance button, go ahead and click on that. And then after a few moments, you're gonna see here that uh, it says connect to the program with Netcat. So we're not going to connect to the program yet because the first thing we need to do is we need to examine the uh, the source code as well as the the binary file that we want to uh, do our hacking against. So the program source code can be, again, can be downloaded here, and we can highlight the link, right click, select copy link, then go back to our web shell. And in the web shell, it looks like the web shell is closed. That's fine. We can hit enter to reconnect. And then after we're connected again, we can use the wget program to download the file. So it's going to be wget and then space, and then right click, paste in the, um, the file address, and then hit enter. That's going to download the file. So we need to download one more file to, the, to do the challenge. So we're going to go back to the challenge description. And it says the binary can be downloaded here. And here's another link. Right click it, select copy link, go back to the web shell, use the wget command space, paste in the file address, download the other file. So the last thing we need to do before we can um, start the challenge is we need to make this file executable. So when you download the file, it's not executable. Um, but in order to do our testing against it, we need to make the file executable. And we can do it, you can do that with this command here, chmod for change file permissions. We're gonna add the executable permission with plus X, and then we're going to run it on the vuln file. So now the file is executable. You can know in this shell uh, because it's colored green. Okay, so if we just run this program, it says here address of main, and then we've got a hexadecimal address. And it says enter the address to jump to, for example, hex 12345. So what are we talking about? We're talking about um, different memory addresses. And memory addresses for these binaries are always going to be in hexadecimal like this. What we need to do, well, let's talk about what we need to do in this program before we, uh, before we proceed. So I'm just going to put in anything. So 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It says your input, this seg fault occurred in correct address. So a seg fault is basically a crash. So we crashed the program and we didn't give the correct address. So what do we need to do? So the first thing we need to do is we need to examine the program. Um, well, the best way to understand what the program is doing is by looking at the source code. So we've got this file over here that we downloaded, vuln.c. This is the source code that was used to compile this program over here, vuln. So we're just going to take a look at it in uh, inside the nano text editor. So we're just going to do nano vuln.c. And we need to figure out what happened here. So over in the web shell, we're going to take a look at the, uh, the code over here. So this is... Um, well, this is a C program, so it has to have all of these um, all of these libraries and stuff that it uh, that it that it includes. And the first thing that we see is we've got this function here that's called segfault handler. So it's basically what happens when the program crashes. So when the program crashes, it prints segfault occurred incorrect address exit. And then we've got this function right here called the win function. 
so this is um this is an example of a return to win type of binary hacking challenge where we have to somehow activate this win this win function and the win function does this the win function prints out u1 and then it opens up the um, the flag.txt file so in most of these um, binary hacking binary hacking challenges we need to access the flag txt file or we need to find some sort of hidden message inside of the binary and in this case when we run the win function this is what we want to do because it reads the flag for us and then we can solve the challenge so that's what the uh, the win function does but what else does it do so this is the main program here so the main program it prints out the um, the memory address of the main function, and this is the main function inside of here. And it says here, enter the address jump to. What we need to do is we need to we need to find the um, the address of the win function. If we can find the address of the win function, we can um, we can plug it in to the binary, and then we can get our flag and we can win the we can finish the challenge. So this is how you would do, do it normally. Let me, uh, let me demonstrate. So we've got the Vuln binary here, and we can examine it using the Radare2 debugger program with this command right here. So Radare2 in debugger mode with all of the analysis done, so the capital A means that we analyze the binary uh, as soon as we get into the debugger. And we need to supply the name of the file that we're going to be debugging, which is the Vuln file over here. So this is the command. After we've located, after we get into the debugger, what we need to do is we need to locate the functions. So we've analyzed all of the um, all the symbols and the functions in this binary. The next thing we need to do is we need to locate the locate the the functions with this command here. So AFL stands for all functions list, and we get a lot of different functions in here. So the only functions we're interested in is the address of the win function here, because the program lets us jump. In um, jump to the execution of any memory, of any memory address, and this is the memory address of the win function. If we can redirect the program, um, the program flow to this address here, then we win. So <laughs> it should be, it should seem um, very obvious. We just plug this in, and then we uh, we put this in the program, and then we win. the the pro The problem is this. Um, they mentioned something here called pi. So pi time. So beware, we have pi. And they're talking about uh, a certain um, memory, so binary memory protection. And let's talk about that binary, pre binary protection right now. So the memory protection, this is called pi. So this is called pi memory protection. So this is called pi. It stands for position independent executable. And this is also known as PIC, so PI or PIC, Position Independent Code. So this is a type of memory protection. So PI ensures that the program code can be executable no matter where it is located in the program memory and will load instructions in different memory addresses each time the binary is run. So each time we run the binary, it's not going to, um, it's not going to put the, the functions in the same place in the program memory and the in the same uh, memory addresses. That's because they're they're somewhat randomized. So <laughs> this means that uh, we can't just get the um, the address of the win function and expect it to work. But there is a way that we can defeat this uh, this protection. However, program functions will will still retain their relative offsets which means that if we can find, we can determine the memory address of one function during execution, we can locate others. So 
the relative offsets, which means the relationship between the, uh, the memory addresses between two different functions, these will remain the same, even if there is pi memory protection in place. So if we know that um, the main function is at this memory address, and that the sim.win function is at this memory address, then we can take the difference between these two memory addresses, and that's how we would, we would locate the, uh, the location of the, the win function. So since the difference between the main function's address and the sim.win function's address is hex, hex 96, and that's what happens when you subtract the, um, this number from this number, you get hex 96. If we have the main function's address, we can subtract hex 96 from it to determine this, the address of the sim.win function. So this is how we would do it using Python. We would print the, the main function's address, and then we would subtract hex 96, and this resulting hexadecimal is the address for the win function over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. So if you don't, oh, sorry, we're supposed to be going here. Whoops. Okay, let's let's exit out of here. Okay, we're gonna quit out of the debugger. And so the way that we can confirm that this binary is using the uh, the PIE or the PIC protection is with this command here. So ribbon two dash i for information on the vuln file over here. So this is going to tell us a lot of information about the binary, and it'll tell us stuff like the architecture and the, um, the file type, the number of bits that are being used. So this is a 64-bit um, executable. It can tell us the, um, the byte order. So the endian order, this is little endian order, which means it, uh, it inserts all the bytes in reverse. And these are all the memory protections over here. So the one that we're paying attention to in this case is this one over here, PIC. So PIC is set to true, which means that we can't just plug in the win function's address, but we do need to derive it from the, the main function's address. And if we, can, if we know the main function's address, then we can uh, calculate the, the win function's address. Let's do that. OK, so we run. Vuln, and it says the address of main is over here, so this one. So we know already that um, this is going to be hex 096 to get the uh, to get the address of the win function. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go over to my Kali Linux terminal, and I'm going to run this Python command. So Python command. And what was the Python command one more time? Hold on. Let me get the Python command. It's going to be in here. OK, so the Python command is going to be Python dash C print hex in hex the main hex address and then subtract hex 96 so we just need to get the um, the address of the main function which is here i'm just going to copy that i'm going to plug it in over here and then i'm going to do the calculation so the calculation says that this should this should be the address of the of the win function. So we can go ahead and copy that. And we can paste this in. And then hit enter. Okay, so it says input something something something. U1 cannot open file. So why does it say cannot open file? The reason why it says cannot open file is because we didn't create a um, a flag file in here. Um, let's let's just create a flag file right now just uh, so that we can prove that we can access it. 
Okay, so the flag file is going to be, we're going to put some uh, stuff in there. Hacker frogs, hacker frogs win. This is going to be the, the contents of my flag. Okay, so we're going to run that again. So it says that the main address is this. So we're going to do the, our, we're going to do our calculation one more time. And we're just going to replace the, the hex address in here with the, the one that was generated. And we're going to grab this and plug it into the, uh, the executable. OK, so paste this in. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. OK, um, let's see. Okay, yeah, I'm not too sure why I'm not too sure why the um why the calculation wasn't correct in this case. But let's uh, let's try it one more time. Okay, so this is the address. We're just going to copy this. I think you did not copy the correct main address. That's why well, that's possible. Okay, so address of main, let's make sure to copy this correctly. Then we will plug it into our calculation over here. So we're just going to take the um, the value of the main function. We're going to subtract hex 96. And this should be the value of the win function. OK, let's paste this in. Okay, yeah, we did it successfully. So it says you won, Hacker Frogs win. Awesome, awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and do this challenge in the uh, on the remote server and solve the challenge. Okay, so we need to restart our instance because we took too long. So we're gonna click on that, and then we're gonna access the the binary on the remote server. So here it says that to connect to the program with netcat, we've got our command over here. We can just copy this, copy the command, then go over back to our web shell, in the web shell, paste in the command, and it says that our the address of main is this. So we're just going to do exactly what we did before. We're going to copy the address. We're going to do our calculation with, uh, with Python. paste in the address and then get the get the address here so we're just going to plug this in and hopefully this is the correct one okay so it says your input was this you won great so we got the flag uh, the flag says pico ctf basic position independence <laughs> Okay, so let me copy the flag. So let's go ahead and go back to the challenge, paste in the flag, and submit the flag. And we're done. All right, everybody, this was a guided walkthrough for the PyTime Challenge from the PicoCTF 2025 event. If you enjoyed this guided walkthrough, please Click on the like and subscribe buttons on the video and leave a comment underneath the video. But until next time, Hacker Frogs out. Hey there, Hacker Frogs. Are you enjoying this workshop? Learning new concepts and skills? If so, there's a way you can support the channel. And it's totally free. Just click on the subscribe button below the video. Also, click on the like button. And if you have questions or comments on this workshop, please leave them below the video. Thanks for listening. And now, back to our scheduled programming.